All right, how's it going, everyone? So I wanted to kind of just try to build out something really simple with vanilla JavaScript. And I figured I'd show how to do like a simple display that you've connected to a REST API and just, you know, fetch some data and display that to the users. So there's this cool site here called uh, Public APIs. You can scroll through it and just try to find some random APIs. And this is kind of good to kind of practice your knowledge with building out websites. So I'm going to click on the first one, Animals, and just find like a random one here. In fact, I do have one I'm already going to use, but I would recommend picking one that says Core is Yes, or else you're going to run into some issues trying to connect to it from your browser. So I'm going to use this dog facts one, but you can kind of go through any of these and try to think about what you could potentially build, use your imagination. But we're going to do this one. And if you read through this, it kind of gives you three ways to fetch information. So if you take this URL here and I hit it, with a get request. Remember, if you use your browser and you type in a URL here, that is a get request. Okay, so if you don't know what the word get means, there's different HTTP methods. There's get, post, put, patch, delete. By default, when you just kind of fetch a resource, it's using a get. But you'll see here, we have a bunch of data. This is JSON, which is the structure of like um, some data that we use typically in JavaScript. And it's uh, just basically contains a list or an array of 435 items and it has a bunch of different facts about dogs so that's pretty cool you can kind of you know imagine what you can kind of build off of that and there's also ways to pass in something called query strings so what you can do with a query string is in the url you can put this at the end of it let me make sure i'm doing this right they're saying change all to this so i can say dog query string number and let's say i wanted to just get five facts about dogs so i click five I believe it's going to give you five random facts about dogs. So let's try to build something using this, right? We could build like a little UI that has like a slider or something and you click on get facts, click on a button and that could fetch back these facts and we can display them. So I am going to try to keep this really simple. Um, I'm going to just basically make an index file inside of this folder and we are going to basically start building out a vanilla JavaScript project to hopefully fetch that dog data and get some back. It's not going to be something too extravagant i want to keep this simple but what i'm going to do is inside the body i'm going to put a script tag because we probably are going to need to write some custom javascript and inside the head i'm going to put a style tag because we probably want to style you know what we're displaying so the first thing i want to do is i want to start with the javascript because um it's the most interesting in my opinion so hopefully you kind of understand JavaScript and how like, you know, data structures are, you have arrays, objects, strings, numbers, boolean, stuff like that. But if you wanted to fetch this data inside your website and display it, well, you'd need to kind of write some JavaScript to do that, right? Um, and before we actually do that, let me go ahead and open this with a live server. I have an extension called live server and I can open this index file in my browser. And anytime I make changes to the page, so if I go down here and type in like, hello, and click save, you'll notice that my browser refreshes and it will also display whatever, you know, it needs to display. Whenever you're coding, your beginner, always have this terminal open down here. You can right click on this and say inspect, or I like to do options command J if I'm on Mac, just because typically you get errors in your console and you don't want to waste time trying to figure out what's going on without seeing those errors. So we are going to focus on the console tab and the network tab. These are the most important things to kind of understand. So when the page loads, what we want to do is we want to fetch some random facts about dogs. So let's just go ahead and copy this URL. And we are going to, in the script tag, this is where you can kind of write some JavaScript. I'm going to say const dog underscore URL. I like to name my constants with all caps kind of snake case. And I'm going to put that URL in there, okay? Um, and we are going to basically try to fetch that data. So when the page loads, it's going to run this script. This is kind of how, you know, HTML works. It's going to run this script after it parses through all this stuff. It's going to kind of create this variable here. This is a string. And built into the browser, there is a method called fetch. So by default, fetch is going to do a git request. Remember in the beginning of this video, I talked about, you know, git, put, patch, delete, post, whatever. But you can do a git request using fetch on this dog URL. And that is going to return you something called a promise, right? So hopefully you kind of understand what promises are. Basically, it's an object that has a dot then function on it. And that then function is going to have a parameter, which I can kind of get back to JSON by doing this. Again, I'm using GitHub Copilot. It's kind of telling me what I could kind of write out here. 
But if you want to do something with that array of dog JSON, I can kind of do dot then and then kind of get the JSON format of the response. You just need to kind of know how to do this with fetch. But then you can do something called promise chaining to basically just print out that data. So when this page loads, remember I'm using live server, so it should have already restarted and, you know, tried to fetch this. We are unfortunately getting a cores error. So unfortunately this site says cores yes. Uh, maybe I read this wrong. Maybe we actually should be using a cores no endpoint. So that kind of sucks. We might have to actually write a quick backend API to kind of do this. So there's a package called local course proxy, which I think I can try installing. Let's just run this and see what happens. I might have to use sudo for this, but hopefully that will install a package that I can use to kind of proxy this endpoint so that our browser can actually request some data from it. So unfortunately, I probably screwed something up. I got to do sudo to install that. But as it's installing, let's kind of look through this. So basically it's saying you can set up the proxy like this. So I'm going to go ahead and in a new terminal, I guess I could do it here. I'm going to go ahead and put that full URL here. And I'm going to put that proxy URL and make sure I kind of backspace all the way to the dot com. Hopefully this works. I never used this before. Okay. So at this point, you should hopefully be able to hit that same kind of URL locally. So I can say localhost uh, 8010 slash API. I kind of forgot what it was. It was API v1 dog. So let's just go ahead and copy this. And let's cross our fingers and hope this works. And it didn't work. So let's go back and figure out what are we doing wrong. I think you have to do slash proxy. So let's do slash proxy here. Please work. Please work. There we go. All right. So a little workaround. Instead of actually hard coding this URL, I'm going to paste in that proxy URL. So you have to have this proxy running locally to be able to work with the core stuff. It's probably way more advanced than I wanted to get in this tutorial, but who cares? So let's go back to this document. I want to show you in the console, if I refresh this page, it's going to do a request. Look at the network tab down here. You see that it did a request to dogs. You can kind of zoom in a little bit in case you uh, have bad eyesight like me. And you can see that it did a request to that local endpoint, which is going to proxy that URL that we kind of talked about. And we get back an array of five doc facts. So we are going to try to take these facts and display them to the page. You also see in the console log, we did print them out. So if you understand promise chaining, we're basically saying get that JSON and just console log it out. So hopefully, use your imagination. You can kind of just put some curly braces here and we can do whatever we want here. So I'm gonna put a to-do and say like display facts on page. All right, so how can we do this? Well, let's go ahead and start making some divs and we're gonna put the facts inside of the divs. So remember this JSON is an array. So I'm gonna say for let dog fact of response JSON and we can look over that array one by one. And if you look at the data structure of each object in the array, it just has a property called facts. So technically, we could just do this if you wanted to kind of do a shorthand. I think this should work fine. And just to verify this is working, always just console log stuff. You know, we'll use the debugger, make sure that you're on the right path. Because if you code too much stuff, you're going to get stuck and just waste hours trying to fix a simple issue. So we got all the facts printed out. You see these strings printed out. And what we're trying to do is we want to display those to the page here dynamically. So what we could do is I'm going to put a div here. I'll say ID of dog hyphen facts. We can name this whatever we want, but this is just a kind of a div that's going to hold on to those facts and display them. And what I like to do also in my JavaScript is I'm going to go ahead and just make that into a const variable here and say dog facts el for element. And I'm going to say document get element by ID dog back. So that'll fetch that element from the page and we can actually start appending things to it. So I'm going to go ahead and inside of this for loop, we need to make a new div for every fact that we got, right? We need to append some DOM elements to the page for every fact. So I'm going to say const dog fact is equal to create element of P that works. You could do div here. You can do whatever you want, but I'm going to create the element and I'm going to say dog fact dot um, I'll say inner text, I believe. And I can just go ahead and say, go ahead and say fact. So that'll take, let me kind of walk you through what's going on here. We are going to create a paragraph tag, and then we're going to change the text of that paragraph tag to be the fact. So remember, like we had like, is it a duck dot dot dot? This is like a fact. This is a fact. 
So you can imagine we're going to try to append five paragraph tags here with the facts. So how do you append things to the page with using vanilla JavaScript? Well, remember we have this dog facts el, and we want to append dot append. Pretty simple. Append this dog fact. So we're going to loop through the facts and append them to the page like this. And if everything works fine, we should see five dog facts kind of displayed here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and make this take this one step further and kind of uh, show you how you can have like a load more button. You know, it's kind of good to have some interactivity on the page. So I'm going to make a button here and I'm going to say load more. And what we're going to do is basically put an event listener on that button. So again, what I like to do here is I'm going to say make a constant variable called load more btn for button. And I'm going to say load more is the DOM element we're trying to get. Hopefully this stuff makes sense. We're just basically trying to fetch the DOM element from the page that already exists. And we need to add an event listener. You can add it here. You can add it down here, wherever you want. I'll just say load more button dot add event listener. And when someone clicks on that button, we're going to call a function. So the function we want to do is we basically want to run this code. Okay. So I'm going to show you a little bit about drawing up code. I could basically cut and paste this into this function if I want to, but maybe this is a cool function that we can use. So I'm going to say const load some dog facts is a function that takes in the number of dog facts. So number of facts. And we are going to basically take that code and I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to kind of take the dog URL and I'm going to interpolate that number here. So instead of, you know, doing the hard coded of five, let's say we wanted to do something that was more dynamic and I could default this to five as well. So now we have like a more abstract function that we can call as many times as we want. And whenever someone clicks on the button, I'm just going to say load some dog facts. In this case, I'm going to do three. Every time you click the button, I'm just going to load three. So if we take a step back and actually look at this code, what is this doing? Well, you click on the button, it's going to load three dog facts, which that is going to basically do a fetch request it's going to get three random dog facts. Cause again, we're kind of interpolating that string here. And then we're going to basically append those dog facts to the screen. Okay. So let's go back to the page and let's go ahead and look at that button. It looks messed up because we forgot to add some text here. I'm going to say load some facts. I'll say load more facts. All right, so let's just go ahead and click that button. And notice that we get back three facts. Click it again, you get some more facts. Click it again, you get some more facts. And remember, every time you click this button, it's actually doing another HTTP GET request to that backend to get some more dog facts. So we actually have a cool page that's dynamically fetching some dog facts. And every time you click it, it's getting you three random facts. So what I would suggest doing from here, if you actually followed along and you're still watching this video, you know, change this up a little bit. Try to add a slider where when someone slides it from like zero to 10, you know, they can pick how many dog facts they want. And when they click the button, it's going to fetch back that exact amount that the user is wanting. And you can also kind of take it a step further by just looking at this API. Maybe you can do something different with like this query string with the index, or maybe you can fetch all the dog facts and display them like using some styling, some CSS. Honestly, styling is kind of uh, boring to me, so I'm probably not going to do any styling here. But yeah, if you if you learned something from this video, give me a thumbs up. Also, if you're new to this channel, press that subscribe button because it should help you become a better JavaScript developer or front end engineer. Uh, and like always, if you have a suggestion of a video that you want to maybe have me do, if I get around to it, I can do that. Leave a comment below and let me know if this was actually helpful for you. Anyway, I hope you learned a, a fact or two about dogs. I mean, most of this stuff I don't really know about, nor do I really uh, care about, to be honest. But <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Happy coding.